a uh, you know what if what if there is a financial crisis where all these big uh, rich people and corporations and companies in different parts of the world pull out of the one dollar bill as a standard and so our market crashes big time worse than it did even during the depression back in the what was it the 30s you know what if that happens you know and then there's chaos for a short period of time and riots because there's no food or water or you know gasoline or electricity and so martial law is established you know in order to calm everybody down and develop some kind of order you know that's probably when uh, if there was going to be any kind of Sharia law enforcing this country it would be accepted because it's better than uh, chaos so there you go half the country probably three-quarters of the country would reject that but we w won't have a choice if it's coming out of martial law and then after all that takes place uh, we're still not happy so here's a theory uh, the Pope comes over from uh, the Vatican and establishes uh, uh, church uh, civil authority you know kind of like the Union of Church and State where Sunday is acknowledged as a holy day and these, this is a respect to the Christians and Sharia law is established as the law of the land in respect to uh, the Muslims and so now everybody's happy and he made peace with everybody bada bing bada boom there's problems with that you know there's serious problems with that and it's seriously possible that that could happen so um, this video is to, is to discuss the, that potential. If they truly see no wrong in this act, we are not to judge them. We can try to warn them, of course, but that's where our job ends. That's why it clearly states, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind here. We cannot force any man to believe anything we believe. By the way, if you read all of Romans 14, you will discover the true topic and find it was again taken completely out of context. God never rested on the first day of the week. He never blessed it. Nor did his son Jesus ever acknowledge the first day of the week in any way, shape, or form. The apostles never rested on it either. In fact, the New Testament Christians were never recorded as being at rest on the first day of the week in any historic reference or Bible scripture known to man. If those that believe such things would have researched their own church history, they would have found that in 321 A.D., Constantine made the pagan Sunday Sabbath law of the land. Historic fact is, all Christians kept Sabbath for hundreds of years after Jesus ascended. Think about that fact for a moment. Had you known that, you would have known before your pastor spoke that every verse ever used to suggest the apostles were part of or even alive during the Sabbath to Sunday change was a bold-faced lie, because it was never suggested to be changed until 321 A.D., hundreds of years after they died. When 321 A.D. came, only those Christians that feared Roman rule and failed to trust God kept Sunday as Sabbath. The false preachers of today would have you believe the Sabbath was changed during the time the Bible was penned. Historic and biblical fact is, they lied. You cannot find one single line of scripture from Genesis to Revelation that proclaims Sunday to be blessed, sanctified, made holy, or even enforced. Think about that for a moment. No law was ever made by the God of creation to enforce the first day of the week. Romans 4.15 says, Where no law is, there is no transgression. You cannot commit sin unless there is a law being broken. Would not our Lord and Savior at least given us one simple verse to proclaim Sunday as the Sabbath if in fact he meant to do such a thing? Why should we, as his followers, consider something holy that he never considered to be holy? The reality here is that it is simply called the first day of the week in all scripture from Genesis to Revelation. One more thing should be mentioned here. Many do claim that the day Jesus rose from the dead is the reason all should keep Sunday holy. However, the word of God is quite clear about how we as Christians are to acknowledge the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is not as all the Sunday preachers suggest by going to church on Sunday. The Bible says it is done by baptism. In Romans 6 verses 3 to 5 it says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. 
In other words, when you go under the water, you symbolize and acknowledge his death and burial. When you come out of the water, you symbolize and acknowledge his resurrection. Merely stepping into a church on the day he arose each week simply cannot do this. In fact, if his death and resurrection was really the reason for going to church on Sunday, why is it no one goes to church every Friday? Isn't that the day he died? Some years ago, I posted on the ministry website a challenge for all pastors, preachers, and even Bible-studying Christians to find a verse that declares God changed the Sabbath from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week. If they were able to send the verse, I promised, and still do promise, to send $10,000 cash. Since then, I have received quite a few attempts from people using the verses I shared in this track. Not a single pastor, preacher, or Bible teacher have ever been able to find that verse. What most people are unaware of is, all of the religious leaders have already agreed in writing, there is no such verse in the Bible wherein it says God changed the Sabbath from day 7 to day 1. The Sunday Sabbath is nothing more than a tradition of men. Think about this as well. The Lord thy God worked on that day when he started creation. He even worked on this day when he rose Jesus from the dead 2,000 years ago. Biblical and historic fact is, he actually rested and left his son in the tomb on the Sabbath day. Even the New Testament Christian women who went to anoint the body of Jesus stopped in their tracks and decided not to anoint him because the Sabbath was drawing near. Luke 23:56 tells us that those women rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Without getting too technical, it's easy to see that the Lord's day is in fact the seventh day. This same God that said in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not, also said in Psalms 89 verse 34 regarding this covenant that we should not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. The Sabbath is important because the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherein the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, according to Exodus 20 verse 11. And First Chronicles 17 27 says, it shall be blessed forever. If your church uses the scriptures shared here to say Sunday is the Sabbath, then the Lord plainly says in Revelation 18.4 that you should come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. After all is said and done, if you just watched this entire video, you know that you just discovered biblical evidence that absolutely every single verse ever used to claim Sunday is the Sabbath was done so in a deceptive manner to make scriptures appear to say something it never said. Some will ask, why have all the churches done such an evil act as this? In Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, we find it prophesied that a beast would think to change the Sabbath so as to get all the world to wonder after him as Revelation 13.3 predicts happens right before the end of the world. Look around. Do you see it fulfilled? All Christian churches now keep Sunday as Sabbath, even though you know for a fact there is not a single verse in the Christian Bible to warrant such a change as this. In case you missed the hint as to who it is that changed the Sabbath earlier, perhaps the following quotes from the Roman Catholic Vatican will help. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority in religious things. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. The Bible says, Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. The Catholic Church says, No. By my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. Had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Is not every Christian obliged to sanctify Sunday and to abstain on that day from unnecessary servile work? Is not the observance of this law among the most prominent of our sacred duties? But you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify, 
it is not yet too late for Protestants to redeem themselves. Will they do it? Will they indeed take the written word only, the scripture alone, as their sole authority and their sole standard? Or will they still hold the indefensible, self-contradictory and suicidal doctrine and practice of following the authority of the Catholic Church and wear the sign of her authority? Will they keep the Sabbath of the Lord the seventh day according to Scripture? Or will they keep Sunday according to the tradition of the Catholic Church? Please feel free to copy and share this video with those you love. God bless. Okay, I'm looking for a cameraman because I don't have one, so sorry for the rude awakening of moving this thing around so you could look at my pale face. You know, the, the fact is, um, whether it's Saturday or whether it's Sunday, the seventh day or the first day, I can't keep it holy because I'm not perfect. I can't keep either day holy. You know, but if God's holy day that he sanctified and basically gave to mankind when Adam was created in the Garden of Eden, um, then it is still that same day. And uh, Sharia law, they, 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 uh, as far as I know, they, they hold to that day, that same day in, in their practices. And Christianity, they obviously, for the most part in America, follow Sunday. So here you go. I, I can't keep the seventh day holy. I can't keep the first day holy. But uh, if we're under some law that's an amalgamated thing between uh, the union of church and state, and we practice the punishments that are involved with uh, Sharia law, then we're going to be expected to hold that day holy or die. Uh, and I ain't going to be able to do it. I can't even keep God's day holy, okay? But the fact is, that is the symbol of the mark of the beast, man. When, when the Antichrist comes out and rules the world, he's going to have his way. And if the people that are following the beast... Uh, mess up they die now me I'm gonna be more like Daniel in the lion's den because I'm not gonna bow down to a symbol uh, to the mark of the beast so they're gonna to want to kill me now, if I die I die but uh, I uh, I fear those that could take the body and the soul not just the flesh and blood which would be uh, God the Father the Son Holy Ghost judgment hell all of that that's the punishment that I'm afraid of or that I fear so anyways it's just food for thought you guys if you want to uh, consider the the mark of the beast and how it really comes about it comes about kind of like what was described there if you combine all that stuff together um, my opinion is God is going to pull people out of Babylon uh, the biblical Babylon symbolizing uh, the uh, amalgamation of religion and uh, civil authority to create some antichrist that we're supposed to lay down and worship and it ain't gonna happen anyways until next time see you later